Good Monday morning, everybody. This is Chris Yost at Wesley United Methodist Church in Greenville, Texas. We are continuing our journey in the Gospel of John. And today we're going to pick up, <clears throat> excuse me, at John chapter 2. And we'll read verses 1 through 11 uh, today. And it looks like tomorrow we'll actually finish chapter 2. Um, but uh, let's, let's start with today. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples also had been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone water jars for Jewish rites of purification, each one holding twenty or thirty gallons. Jesus said to them, Fill the jars with water, and they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, Now draw some out, and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the chief steward tasted the water that had become wine, and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom, and he said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs, in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. First of all, this is a text that uh, we refer to in the Christian rite of marriage. Um, it's a reminder that Jesus um, did bless the rite of marriage with his presence. But also, um, it's this uncomfortable beginning of Jesus' public ministry. Um, we heard about last week how he was being revealed. Um, he started his ministry. He was accumulating his disciples. But this is the first time where he is in the public and perhaps he was still being incognito. We really don't know. But there's this real terse language when Jesus' mother, you know, sees that the wine is given out and says, you know, they have no wine. And Jesus, is, I mean, it's kind of, it is derogatory even in Greek. It's, a, it's kind of like a woman, right? Um, he's like, my hour hasn't come. Now, for you and I, this is just kind of a playful thought in our devotional how many other miracles had Mary seen Jesus perform just around the house? <laughs> you know, <laughs> had there been a dish that dropped off the counter and Jesus picked it up? I don't know. Um, had there been a time when the the flower was giving out and there was just more? We we don't know that. I mean, theologically, we see Jesus doesn't use his his um, divinity to uh, for selfish ends ever, uh, but maybe those were ways that she had seen the divine part of Jesus shining through in benefit of her or their household. We don't know, but she knows Jesus needs to see this. I think the first thing I'd offer to you is uh, how many times have there been something in your life that, uh, man, if Jesus could just see this or bringing it to his attention, I guarantee you Jesus does not tell us my time is not yet here. I think when Jesus comforts us, when he takes us through our times of difficulty, it's a reminder um, that his time is now. It is with us. So anyway, um, there's a lot that can be said about the turning the water to wine. If you didn't hear, this is scrub water. This is dish water. Before plumbing, they just gathered up these giant jars of water. Um, and it was, um, it was not clean. It was not potable. It wasn't for drinking. Um, then this last line section in here. Now, obviously for, for folks that, um, alcohol is not good for them. There, there's some folks that makes them sick or, um, certainly if a person struggled with, with alcoholism, um, this is never a permission slip. Let's get that said. With that said, it is a reminder that in the celebrations of life, there is a time and there is a place. Um, it's not that for 
just whatever's sake that, you know, oh, you should never have anything to drink. No, there's a time and a place. And and while certainly people have ethically argued the, the morals of or the ethics of providing even more alcohol when these people are drunk, the, the, the point of the story is that um, being a Christian, to the point I take from it, being a Christian is not some morose, um, dull, um, grayscale picture in life. Being a follower of Jesus is a colorful bouquet, and there's a time and a place for most everything under the sun. And in this case, at this wedding, this was a time of celebration with wine being a key part of it. Okay. Now, if you find yourself celebrating that every day, um, you need to give me a call. We can talk. But uh, otherwise, just know that um, there's a time and a place and that God is with us even in those times and places. We don't leave God behind. Let's pray. Oh, Lord, that the commonness of our lives would be converted into such a sweet and tasty offering to you and to your kingdom. God, I pray that you would take us in our humble acts of service, um, if they be very common, um, if they be done with the greatest of care and yet the most mediocre of results. I pray, God, that we would be such a rich offering of your grace in this world that people might look and say, just when we had given out or just when the world had given out, God has saved the best for this time, for this season, for the last. God, that's why we're here. That's why we're your people, for you to use us and, and to bless us, not as an end point, to be, to be a blessing for others. In Christ's name, we are sent out this day. Amen.